my name is Hannah, and let's talk books. So literally 10 minutes ago, I decided why not to a reading vlog for Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. So this is obviously my next read, and I've kind of been anticipating it for a while. I've been seeing it talked about quite a lot. It's been on booktube, Instagram, pretty much everywhere, and I finally saw it at my library. I didn't realize they actually had it. I think is yeah, it's labeled as new, so it probably hasn't been there very long. But pretty much all I know about this book is that it's about a stressed out mom who thinks she's turning into a dog. So definitely going to be some weird elements there. I don't remember if I've read the description before, which do I ever remember? So I'll read it with you guys out loud now, but also kind of ignore the background. I just decided to try filming in a different spot, but like there's pens over there because for some reason our clothes won't freaking dry. We don't have a dryer, by the way. We have to hang them up to dry, but it's so humid in here. Nothing dries. So there's kind of clothes strewn about trying to get them to dry better. So so he is not happy about being in the frame. But anyway, description of the book. So it says, one day the mother was a mother, but then one night she was quite suddenly something else. An ambitious mother puts her career on hold to stay at home with her newborn son, but the experience does not match her imagination. Two years later, she steps into the bathroom for a break from her toddler's demands, only to discover a dense patch of hair on the back of her neck. As she studies herself in the mirror, her canine suddenly looks sharper than she remembers. Her husband, who travels for work five days a week, casually dismisses her fears from faraway hotel rooms. As the mother's symptoms intensify and her temptation to give in to her new dog impulses peak, she struggles to keep her alter canine identity secret. Oh, and my alarm is going off for me to take my medicine. Uh, where the heck was I? Seeking a cure at the library, she discovers a mysterious academic tome which becomes her Bible, a field guide to magical women, a mythical ethnography, and meets a group of mommies who are involved in a multi-level marketing scheme and may also be more than what they seem. Okay, that kind of took a different turn than I was expecting at the end there. So, not sure how that's gonna work out. Based on the end of that description, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna enjoy the ending here. Oh, look, it's alright. Um, but I think the intrigue is mainly gonna lie in the beginning and her kind of being like, what the fuck is going on? So, definitely looking forward to that. But the reviews and comments I've seen about this book, some people read it five stars, some people just think it's stupid kind of thing, and others think it's meh. So this really just has like the complete range of opinions on it. So I'm quite curious to find out where I fall. I won't be picking this up until this evening though, because tonight I'm actually going to this book swap at a bar of all places. Um, it's a group of people that I have not met before, but there should be one person that I know there at least. Otherwise I probably wouldn't be going because anxiety. But I have nine books I'll be bringing and I'm kind of excited to see if I can pick up anything interesting or anything that pops out to me because most people that I've met here don't really enjoy like horror or thriller or anything like that. So I just hope there's something that's interesting there. And with that, let's get into it. <laughs> It's now 11.15 at night. I usually don't film this late, so I'm trying to talk a little bit lower than normal, but I just got to page 40 of Night Bitch, and yeah, this is definitely a strange book. The first paragraph, well, literally half of the description takes place in the first two pages here, and also the yellow wallpaper, which is a horror novella that's only like 76 pages. 
I read it back in December. That is also mentioned, which I thought was kind of interesting, and I think might be some foreshadowing for the direction this book goes in, but we'll see on that. So this woman is unnamed, I believe. Instead, she's referred to as the mother, which is kind of weird, and it is a bit confusing in some of the scenes so far, because she'll be interacting with another mother and be referring to that person as like a mother, but then it says the mother, and so it's just like, wait, which one are they talking about? So that has been a little bit confusing in some spots so far. Basically, we're just always in this person's head and she's just struggling. Like, I'm feeling so much anxiety from this book because her child just seems like a demon child, really like, I would not be able to deal with the stuff that's happening. And she's essentially alone since her husband is away for work for like a week at a time. He's basically gone for a week and then home for two days and then gone for another week, etc., etc. So she's really not getting help with raising this kid. She also doesn't seem to have any assistance from like family, like there's no real support group for her. So it's pretty much just her and this child against the world kind of deal and she's not handling it well. The career that it refers to in the description that she had to leave was an art one. She has two master's degrees, it says actually, which is pretty amazing. I guess she went to school for studio art and she was like in charge of a gallery and getting um, like artists together and things like that. Like her job actually sounded pretty interesting but it was so like chaotic and not normal hours that she couldn't keep it with a baby, especially since her husband made more money. So that's how she ended up being the one to stay at home. This is very much about the stresses of motherhood and how it affects literally everything about you. Um, I'm obviously not a mother myself, which I am happy about and uh, reading the things this woman is going through, it seems like a good decision so far. Yeah, I just wanted to give a little of first impressions. This is more dense than I thought it was going to be. Like, I was obviously expecting the weird and unusual, which I tend to love, but it just kind of goes on and on, and there aren't a lot of paragraph breaks, and there aren't chapters so far. Like, I've read the first 40 pages with there not being like a chapter two. So it just kind of feels like a never ending um, chain of thought kind of thing right now. But yeah, we'll see where this ends up. So it's actually two days later and the reason I didn't film yesterday was because of this boy right here. He decided to jump up right when I had sat down with dinner and he spilled soup all over me. So I wasn't exactly feeling up to filming yesterday. Anyway, last night I did read more of Night Bitch. I'm actually on page 100. This book, it's a lot slower than I expected. Like I feel like I'm really having to push myself to keep reading. Like I pretty much read like 10 pages and I'm like, oh, an hour should have passed, right? But it's only been like five minutes or whatever. So that is one thing that isn't exactly great. There's also something that I've been meaning to mention, but I keep forgetting about. I actually thought that this book was like five years old and had only recently been gaining its popularity, but this is actually a 2021 release. And that kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that, but I mean, that explains why I've been hearing about it so much. So I'm actually gonna read a paragraph from here that I think sums up this book quite well. It's not spoilery or anything like that. It's on page 52 and it says, imagine trying to shop for crunchy snacks with a toddler and heightened near animal sense of smell while the enormity of patriarchal society loomed behind every box of farm themed crackers in the crackle of every pretzel bag you picked up. Oh, Dorothy. So I feel like that's a pretty good summary of this entire book. Pretty much a majority of what I read last night was the mother, as she's called in here, just kind of questioning literally everything in life. Like, why did she have to have a kid? Why did she have to give up her career? Like, why this? Why that? Why are things expected in a certain way? Um, kind of all of that, those kind of like existential questions where you try to determine the meaning of your life. 
I'm not even really sure what conclusion she comes to. It's just a bit weird. And then we get more parallels with like people potentially turning into dogs when this group of dogs like shows up at her house and she kind of like associates each of them with a person she knows in real life. And that's kind of when she starts to refer to herself instead of the mother, she is now called Night Bitch. And I'm not sure if that's gonna last until the end of the book, but there's like parts in here that pique my interest, like her trying to come to terms with her life and find her happiness. And even though that might be in an unconventional way, like that's all interesting, but being in her head and having it just be like bricks of a page as I refer to it because it's literally just like all text like not a lot of paragraph breaks kind of thing it just feels dense and since there aren't chapters like I'm in what is considered part two I guess I'm not sure how many parts there are but I mean in 100 pages I've only gotten to a part two so there aren't the traditional chapters obviously and so that just makes it feel like it's even longer and I thought I would really go through this book quickly because I mean it's less than 300 pages yeah it's only like 238 so I'm like oh two three nights I'll be done no it's been two nights and I've only read 100 pages so if you're looking for a quick read I don't think I would suggest this actually just because the writing there isn't a lot of dialogue like the dialogue really just is almost non-existent in here we are really just in this character's head, going through her feelings, going through her thoughts, and watching this sort of transformation happen. Based on where I am now, it almost feels like that would be more the end of the book. So I'm kind of interested to see where this goes from here. I'll definitely be reading more this evening as today is Saturday and we go to D&D. So that will take up a good chunk of the day. But hopefully this picks up the pace a little bit. Like, I don't know. I just, I love bizarre books, but I don't want to feel like I'm reading like a textbook, you know? It's now evening and I am like 57 pages more into this book. And I just got to a section where I assumed it was going to be like, okay, now we're in part three, since before when I had done this, it said like two, but instead it's literally just a paper with a line and it doesn't say three at all. And like when I go to turn the page, it just has like a gray thing here before going into the text. So I'm not really sure what that's supposed to signify. So I don't know if there's going to be a little bit of a time skip or what's happening there, but I'm just going to call this like part three. And yeah, I'm wearing gloves right now because we haven't had heat for, I think it's been over a week now. I think last Friday was when it went out and we have no idea what is going on. Like we know it was supposed to be worked on on Friday and people were actually supposed to come into the apartments, but that never happened. So like, I have no idea what's going on, but it's pretty okay during the day if it's sunny because it was like the big windows and everything it kind of warms things up in here but now that the sun is going down it's just like really really cold i have socks on i have gloves on i'm wearing a sweater like i i even feel cold like this right now like i could easily like put another sweater on or something so has not been fun but anyway so hmm yeah I need to talk about a content warning in here, which I think is brought up on Goodreads, like where people can ask questions. And I'm gonna have this down because it is reflecting way too much. But major content warning for animal death, up until the point where I am currently reading, it has been very brief, quick, not really graphic animal death and it also has not been toward a pet. Now it has gotten to where it's flat out animal cruelty and I'm not saying it wasn't before, I'm just saying now it's like a lot closer to home kind of thing and it's a lot more graphic. It is very obvious when it is coming up so if you do read this book it would be very easy to skip over 
that part completely, but I definitely just wanted to put this in here because it did catch me a little off guard and I did not like it. I kind of wish I skipped over it and that's just not something I like in my books. I'm definitely one of those people where like in a TV show or movie or whatever, I'm gonna care about the animals and the pets a lot more than the people. Okay, with that out of the way, I really hate this person's child. And the problem here is like this woman literally just gives him everything he wants. She tries to say no, he throws a huge freaking fit over it and she's just like, okay, fine, whatever. Cause she's just so fed up with like everyone's bullshit, including her child's that she just gives him whatever he wants. But also she's like, the way she talks towards him and acts towards him is also so loving. So she has like this weird like love and hate thing going on, which it's kind of the same thing with her husband as well. And like her feelings towards them flip very, very quickly. Also, I don't know if I'm just wrong here, but I always thought a toddler was like a three-year-old and it was mentioned multiple times that this child was a toddler. So I'm thinking, okay, he's like three years old, maybe almost going on four kind of thing because of how they talk about him. But then they keep saying he's a two-year-old. So I'm just like, do I misunderstand like what a toddler is? Like, I don't know. But pretty much this book has kept with the same style and everything of where we're in this woman's head, going through her thoughts, going through all of her crazy emotions and everything that's happening. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if she murders her husband or if she just murders her family and then herself kind of thing. Uh, kind of dark, but honestly her thoughts are kind of dark. So this is a very just stressful book. I feel like it's supposed to be like this extreme of how having kids are supposed to be and if you don't fit into like this perfect mold, then you're just this huge failure and you can't do anything right and just kind of along those lines and it's it feels overwhelming like i feel like the author is doing a good job of kind of pushing the feelings that the mom has like onto us the reader and it is very uncomfortable that is for sure i'd mentioned before that our main character actually doesn't have a name but most of the characters actually don't have names and there has to be some significance because there's the mother who now calls herself Night Bitch. There is the boy or the son. That's how he is referred to. There's the husband and every other character except these three women that she sees at this like library event called Book Babies uh, doesn't have a name. So like if she refers to uh, old friends from college or anything like that they don't have names. It's things like the videographer, the working mom, things like that, where these three women from this library group actually have names and they introduce themselves to her and that's how we got the names. So I'm just like, what is that significance going to be? And I really hope it isn't just like a red herring or something. I truly hope there's some significance in there because otherwise I'll feel like I'm going crazy in this book, which is probably the point anyway. At this moment though, why did I pick this up again? It's just gonna glare. I just need to be doing something with my hands, that's it. But anyway, I think if I had to give this book a rating right now, how I feel of it, it would probably be a two which I realized on my channel, I've actually never really explained how I rate books. Um, I use the Goodreads system, like if you mouse over the stars, it will tell you like what each one stands for. Like if I rate it a one, did not like it. Two stars actually isn't like super bad, but cause for me, it means this was okay. It wasn't bad, wasn't good, it was just okay. Three is completely average. A lot of contemporary thrillers would probably be rated this where it's just like, it's nothing new. We've seen it before. It's just average all around. Four would be a book that I really, really enjoyed, but there were enough flaws that kind of like took me out to where it doesn't get five stars. Five stars would be I loved this book. And if there are any flaws in it that I found, they don't really affect my feelings of it. I just kind of wanted to put that out there real quick because I realized I don't think I ever have, but a two is pretty much where I'm at for this. I feel like I'm enjoying it maybe a little bit better than I did in my previous update, but I don't know. It's just so hard to tell. And there really isn't much 
happening. It's also kind of hard to tell how much time is passing because like the weekends the husband is home and then the week they're not but we'll be talking about a Monday and then all of a sudden the husband's there again and so it's like okay we just went through an entire week we just like skipped through so it's kind of hard to tell how much time has passed since the beginning of the book for example so I mean we're not seeing like every single day here it's just kind of skipping around a bit and even like the events we're seeing aren't really big so this is very much like a character study instead of like a plot driven book. I do plan on reading more tonight. I, since this is the weekend, I had wanted to try to read a bit in the afternoon. I have less than a hundred pages left, I believe. So hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully I will finish this tomorrow evening. I finished this book last night instead of having it take today so I am quite happy about that however my very first thought upon finishing this was what the fuck did I just read so you know how I talked about that two star rating earlier that's gonna stay here the pacing did pick up like I was actually quite surprised that I finished it because I had around 100 pages left and just with how I had been going with it, I was, I'd was i only really been able to read like 50 pages in a setting. So I was pretty proud that I was able to finish it last night, but also glad I did because this book is definitely not for me. It is steeped in metaphor and I just don't get it. Like, I mean, it could be the most important metaphor in the world on the most important subject. And if I don't understand it, then I'm just not gonna enjoy it, I'm sorry. So because this book flat out tells you and uses these words, I know that this book is about feminism, the patriarchy, the struggles of motherhood, the struggles of a woman and all the expectations that are placed on women and those who are mothers, etc, etc. But just the way it tackles all those issues, I just brain too dumb apparently. So in the end there really aren't any likable characters in that which I mean is kind of the point point. and I feel like the one good thing that I feel like the author did in here is you feel the emotions that Night Bitch is feeling like all that anxiety stress and everything is put onto the reader as I kind of mentioned before and I felt very stressed reading this like it wasn't like the good kind of tension or anything like that. It was literally like I felt strung out kind of thing. So I do feel like you kind of have to be a bit strong mentally and if you're in a dark place yourself, maybe not pick this up right now because this book definitely made me feel a lot of strange things that I didn't really like. It made me very uncomfortable and I just feel like the way it says some things, if you're not in a good headspace can be actually like a negative impact on you that just kind of feeds into the bizarreness of this book so i definitely think you need to look more into what this book is actually about rather than just reading the description going into it because it was definitely not exactly what i was expecting and i just feel like it went too far in the deep end for me to really appreciate the important messages here unfortunately since i rated this two stars my last two reads have been pretty bad cats are zooming like crazy um, my, the previous one was one and a half stars, now this one's two stars, so kind of hoping the next one's gonna be a winner. But as always, thank you for hanging out with me, it is always appreciated as I hit my hair. And until next time, bonjour and au revoir!